this morning, I just want to share about breaking tradition, breaking the strongholds, so that we can be partakers of the new wine, so we can drink of this new wine. There's a, there's a gulf to cross between reason and revelation. I, we need, I believe we need to build an atmosphere that Satan cannot exist in. We've got to build an atmosphere where Satan cannot live. An atmosphere is created through, I believe, humility and through prayer. Something that God wants to do in our lives. And, and I believe that if we allow Him to do that, He will do it. And I, and I believe honestly today as we were singing that song, we say, yes, Lord. We say, yes, Lord. There's something about being able to say yes to God. Sometimes we don't understand, and I'm thinking of the Lee and Lee today as they're heading off uh, down there to uh, up there to 1770. But you know, it's just saying yes and, and allowing God to be God. And I know in my own life and Nancy's life, when we we weren't saved all that long, and and we were we were just young Christians really, but somehow or other we had a passion in our heart and and a desire to, to serve God and. I had a real estate agency. I had my own uh, building business. We, I had ambition. I had plans that I wanted to do. But all of a sudden, this, this desire, this, this dream to look after neglected children, that, that just, this just consumed us and we could not get away from it. We applied for the position and they told us that we were too young. It was about six months later that we got a letter from these people to say that there was a position that had come available and were we ready to go. But in that six months, God had prepared us and God has got us, got us ready. I remember ringing the guy up and I said, we can come next week if you like. <laughs> Just the way things happened, it was amazing. And, and, and we did it. And I remember going to, to our minister who was a Pentecostal pastor at the time. And he knew different things. He knew natural things about us. He knew that we were only young, that we hadn't been saved long. He, he water baptized us not very lo long before that. And he looked at me with a scowl on his face. I'll never forget the scowl on his face as he looked at me and he said, if you leave me, if you leave this church, you will backslide. I thought, my God. But Lee and Lee, I want to tell you, you leave this church with power, with a blessing of God, amen. You will not backslide. You will not go backwards. You're going to go forward. You're going to grow. You're going to develop even in a greater way, amen. And your kids are going to flourish like the cedars in Lebanon. Amen. And I'm going to come up there fishing from time to time and make sure. Amen. Tradition. Tradition. Thoughts. Man's thoughts. But you, when you, when you, when you, when you know it's God and you say yes to God, I want to tell you there's nothing in hell that can stop God's blessing upon your life. That's where we're at today, amen? And so I just want to share these things. So Father, again, we come to you. And Lord, I just pray today that you'll help me share, Lord, what's on my heart so that we can break through the, the, the walls and the, and the things, my God, that tie us, things that stop us from advancing, things that stop us from, from really getting under that spout where the glory comes out, from getting into your perfect presence. And Lord, being able to become what you want us to become in Jesus' name. And can I say this? There's not one person in this room that God doesn't have a purpose and a plan for your life. He's got a purpose and a plan for your life. And many times we miss it. We, I could have missed it that day if I would have said, man, we're going to backslide if we go. Let's not go. If you don't go, you'll never know. If you don't try, you'll never, ever know. And you've got to come and you've got to be able to experience. So we're talking about today a little bit about uh, tradi tradition and obedience. Man's opinion. And uh, in, in Mark, let's have a look at the book of Mark. I was looking in another area there. Matthew, Mark chapter 7. This, was, uh, this, is, this story is, is just typical of, of what Jesus faced from day to day. As, as he came across different types of people. And, and it says in uh, Mark chapter 7, verse 5, it says the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do you disciples not walk according to the traditions of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? There was, you know, 
This, these people had so many traditions, so many things that, that they had to do, so, many, so much stuff there that, that men, they were so busy doing all these things that they, got, they lost sight of the whole purpose and the plan. And we can get so busy doing, trying to be this or trying to be that or trying to even to be spiritual, trying to act like as if we know everything or whatever it is, and we lose sight of the purpose and, and the plan that God has for your life. Can I say, take a break, chill out a little bit, just sit in His presence, just lay in His presence. I love the presence of God in this meeting. I love the presence of God in our prayer meetings. I just lay on the carpet. I just lay there and allow the presence of God. And as you just get into His presence, I get at my desk when I'm going to prepare a message and I just sit there and I just sit there and the presence of God comes over my life and all of a sudden thoughts start to come. Things start to happen. I'm not, I'm not pressured. I'm not worried. If I don't get a message for a Sunday, i got plenty of guys here that have got one. <laughs> But you just, it's out of that, it's out of that freedom. It's no pressure. It's just letting God be God and us as people. And He will download and He'll just start to speak to your heart. But there's always the Pharisees and the scribes and the Sadducees that, that want to come and they want to know this and they want to know that. And they've got all these different questions. Why, 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 why do they uh, not walk according to the ways that we walk? Why don't they do what we do? And he answered and said to them, Well did Isaiah prophesy to you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain they worship me, teaching the doctrines, at, uh, sorry, as doctrines the commandments of men. These people, their hearts are far from me. My, you know what I believe today? That, that, that scripture where he said, that God is seeking people who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. I've been in meetings, friends. I've been around for a little while. You might have noticed that. I got a few barnacles. I got a few scratches. But I've been in meetings there where, where people there, they're just trying to impress somebody else, trying to impress the pastor. I've been in meetings there when I was a visiting ministry, but nobody knew who I was. And I, I always used to seek out the, the prayer meeting. Where's the prayer meeting going? And they say there's a meeting going on at the back, so I go out there and I just, just start to pray, start to talk, and they're the things of God, but I'm watching. And I see people there. And all of a sudden, the pastor walks in, and as he walks in the door, everyone, I thought, who are they trying to impress? In vain they worship me. <laughs> Man, I want to tell you, don't try to impress anybody. Just get a hold of God, amen? Just get a hold of God. Let God be God in your life. Friend, get a hunger, get a passion, get a passion for God. Just, 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 oh, just relax and let God be God. I want to tell you, God never, ever made it hard for man to find Him. You're looking at me like a cow looks at a new gate. <laughs> hey, people honor me. With their lips, but their hearts are far from me. What is God looking for today? What's God looking for today in your life? He's looking for your heart. He's not looking for your money. He's not looking for your anything else. He's just looking for your heart. He's not listening to vain words or, or repetitions or things like that that we do. He's not interested whether you wash the dishes this morning or if you left them in the sink. <laughs> He's after your heart. He just wants your heart, amen. Once he gets your heart, he's got us, amen. He's got our lives. In vain they worship me, teaching as doctrine the commandments of men. What an amazing thing. Verse 13, making the word of God of no effect through the tradition which you've handed down and many such things you do. Things are handed down. There's so many things that ha get handed down. Handed down. Uh, you, you know, a lot of us aren't aware of the things that, that have been handed down, things that, that cause us to, to react, respond, or, or carry on, or why we do things. What happens in our lives? We, we not be, may, may not be aware of it, but we're all affected in some way or another by tradition. 
It may, it may not even be spiritual things. My mother was superstitious of the color green. Can you believe that? And other things. You couldn't put, your sh couldn't put new shoes on a table. You couldn't do this. You couldn't do that. I've, I'm not taking off my shoes, but the only thing I had green was I got green cap socks on this morning. <laughs> but it was a funny thing. If, any, if somehow or other she got a bike or something like that, you could guarantee it was going to be green. But she'd, So they'd paint it. And as a young kid, I used to think, but it's still green underneath. <laughs> but all these things have an effect on our lives and, and superstition and things like that. The color green, it, it brought negative effect on my life. There are things there that, that, that when it starts, it, 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 it just explodes and starts to grow and other things get a hold of it. I wasn't raised in the church, so I didn't have the privilege of getting indoctrinated with some like you have. But there's a lot of religious stuff that get around our lives. The disciples were with Jesus, and they struggled with what they'd been taught as a young person in the synagogues. And there's a lot of things that, that, we've been, that we might struggle with that have been taught to us through, through negative preaching or negative songs or whatever it might be, that, that, that we, we get things messed up. And, and God, by His Spirit, wants to break it out because God wants to pour out new wine. But in, the old wineskin's got to soak for a while. Lay on the floor. Get in the presence of God. Put, get into your lounge room, wherever it is, where nobody can see you. Get, get, get some music going, whatever it might be. Play some music. Let, the, let it rip. Hallelujah. Amen over your life and, and let it saturate you and let it let, get yourself marinated with God. You can marinate an old person and they still taste like a young person. Amen. You can marinate boot leather. You can marinate, I got, what do you call it? Fillet steak. Fillet steak might be a little bit tougher a little bit more tender, but I want to tell you, it'll taste just the same. That's what I believe that God wants is our hearts. He wants us to just marinate in His presence so that He can change us because there's a lot of stuff that's on the inside of us, a lot of stuff that's happened to us. There's a lot of teaching that's gone on in our lives. You might have even been in a church where you were told that healing isn't for today. You might have been in a church where you were told speaking in tongues is demonic. I heard all these sort of things. I'll never forget it. I was told that it's the demons that's doing all this and all that sort of stuff. And I remember as a young person watching a TV program and this, this, this medium woman was up there and she was talking in tongues. And I'm thinking, my God, it's real. That it's a demon. And so you've got to struggle through all this stuff. But if you, if you marinate and if you get in the presence of God, somehow or other, a lot of that teaching, a lot of that thinking dissolves and all of a sudden the truth starts to penetrate and there's a hunger and there's a desire on the inside of you. Friend, if you haven't got a hunger, if you haven't got a desire, something's got to change on the inside of you. If you're just like a lump of seaweed coming in and out of church, going in one way and just going out the same way, friend, I want to tell you, something's got to change. If you can't lift up your hands and worship your king, something's got to change if you can't praise the name of Jesus something's got to change it means that you've been affected it means that you've been knocked about and unfortunately too many people get knocked about in churches you don't have to shout just because I'm preaching so good <laughs> it's the truth friends and people get messed up and, and all confused and goodness knows what else I want to tell you, friends, just Jesus, amen. Just lift up your hearts and worship Jesus. Lay on the floor and allow the anointing to wash over you. Just cry out, Jesus, help me, and he will help you. These disciples and these religious people, how come? How come that they don't do this and how come they don't do that? The disciples were, were impregnated with wrong teachings and wrong thinking. The stuff that they've been taught in the synagogue affect, affected their thinking. 
Jesus comes to a situation. He's got his disciples. It's found in John 9, 1. And the disciples look at him and they say, Who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? See, that was, the, that was the theology, that was the doctrine, that was how people thought. And Jesus says, neither this man nor his parents have sinned, but that the glory of God might be revealed. You see, a lot of our thinking is not this or that, it's totally different. You see, not only, not only did the disciples believe that, but there's a good chance that the young man that was born blind thought the same. Because that was the teaching of the day. And here he is, a blind boy, growing up in the church, and all he hears preaching is one of these people sinned, either the mother or the child sinned, that he was born blind, and it was God that did something terrible to his life. We, t- today, friend, I, I think I shared it the other week, the world blames God for everything the devil does and they blame the devil for everything that God does. God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. They that come to God must come to God and they must believe that He is God and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Go after God, friend. Go after Jesus. Go after the Lord. Don't go after this or that. Don't go after position. Don't go after whatever you think you've got to go after. Just go after God. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all of these things shall be added unto you. How, how simple is that? But we get all this other stuff in our mind, in our thinking. Goodness knows what. Who sinned? This man. They were most surely trying to just show Jesus how smart they were. I tell you what, there's a lot of times I talk to Jesus and he gives me a wrong, different answer. (laughs) Challenges us. Who sinned? This man or his parents that is born blind. Not only did the disciples believe that, but this man, this blind man, can you imagine going through life like that? Oh, man, there's sin in my family. There's sin here. There's sin there. That's why I'm like I am. But Jesus walks up to this man. Why? I, I often think, why didn't Jesus just, just say, in, in my name, or lay hands on him and say, receive your sight, or do this or do that? <laughs> he didn't do that. He spat on the ground. Can you imagine today if we were to spit on the ground and make some mud and then start putting it on people? Man, we'd have health safety, whatever you call them, all these people coming in. Glory, we'd, we'd be in more trouble than Flash Gordon. Anybody, if I'm talking to people who know Flash Gordon, <laughs> a young person say, who's Flash Gordon? <laughs> because we're talking about something that this young man could have said, no, the reason that I'm blind is because God has made me blind. Because there's sin in my life. Jesus spat on the ground, made mud, put it on his eyes, and he said, now go wash in the pool. There's tradition that says, I'm like this because God made me like this. But then there's obedience that says, no, I'm going to do what Jesus says and I will receive my sight. What I'm talking about, friends, is there's a lot of times in our lives when we say no, when we should be saying yes. Tradition says no, but Jesus says yes. Go. There's a situation there where Peter... Peter was, was sort of just minding his own business, doing what he does, praying, going from place to place. says that he got to a place where he was very, very hungry, tired, most probably hungry. It says, actually said it, he was very hungry. And so here he is, he goes up onto the roof to pray. I tell you what, friends, if you don't want God to touch you, don't pray. <laughs> But if you want God to start talking to you and sharing with you and breaking tradition and smashing things off your life, just get into His presence and start to pray. Hallelujah. 
It's not some religious prayer. It's just opening your heart to God. And it says that as he was praying there, he went into a trance. Spirit of God got all over him. The anointing came on his life. And as he was there, he said all of a sudden, he saw a sheet coming down. And it had all these unclean animals inside. Then he heard a voice from heaven. It says, arise, kill, and eat. But what did Peter say? Oh, no, 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 by the hair of my chinny, chin, chin. I'm not eating that stuff. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. I'm, I, I, I'm a good Jewish boy. I have that stuff has never passed my lips. Oh, I tell you what. God's got to break some tradition. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about stuff there that you know is sin. I'm talking about tradition that holds us bound. I'm talking about religious stuff. Religious stuff. Take, kill, and eat. Three or four times, three times I think it came down. He kept talking to him. He didn't have a clue what was going on. He's just thinking, my God, what is going on here? My, my teaching, you don't do this, you don't do that. But now here is God saying, now do this. I, I, I can't do it. Never do it. And I'm going to start now. Can I say this? You and I would be amazed at what God is doing outside of your little circle that's going to affect you. You'd be amazed what God is doing outside of your little circle that's going to affect you greatly. But I believe the Holy Ghost is moving. I believe He's doing stuff. I believe that He's touching things. He's messing with the church because He wants it free. And all of a sudden, there's another man is also praying, a good man, a devout man, a man whose arms and his prayers had gone up to God. And God starts speaking to him and says, I want you to go. I want you to send for a man by the name of Peter. I want you to, he's going to tell you some things. He's going to share some things with you. The Bible says immediately. He, this man was full of tradition too. But this is a man that feared God. A man who, who was very conscious of what God was, was around his life. And so he hears these words, and, and so he gathers a couple of his, of his guys, and, and he sends them off. It's not long after that, that, that while Peter's up there, all of a sudden he hears a knock on the door, and it's these guys, unclean. You see, God is trying to get stuff to us. But our tradition blocks it. God is trying to get stuff to us. But we'd rather do it our religious ways. And I'm believing that we're going to see the power of God come in such a way that people will be on their faces before God. People now, you can't go and get saved at a yes desk. You get saved at the altar, bow on your knees and given your life to Christ Almighty. Amen. And here he is, there as he sent these guys, and Peter says, what's going on here? And so Peter invites them in, totally, totally against his custom, totally against what, what, what he's supposed to do. It's, it's unlawful. Unlawful, not to God, but unlawful in his mind. There's so much things in our mind that, that it's got to be shifted and released, amen. And that we can somehow or other find freedom and liberty. We know this story only so well, and, and Peter, now he, he goes, and, 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 and he doesn't know, he just, they hear the story, so he goes, and, and he goes to Cornelius' house. And he starts to talk to Cornelius and starts to share. And, and, he, and he says, what happened? He said, well, this is what happened. And Cornelius tells his story. And he said, you're going you're to show us and you're going to tell us what we need to hear. 
And so Peter gets up and, and, and brings out all of his notes and he starts preaching and preaching and preaching. And he's telling him and telling him and telling him. But let me say again to you, I might be preaching here, but I am totally aware that there's one mightier than I. There's one here greater than I. There's one here that can talk to you louder and better than I can ever talk to you. I'm just filling up space here. I'm just, uh, while, while the Holy Ghost is working on your lives, because I want to tell you, the Holy Ghost is real and alive and moving mightily. Amen. And it says that while he was still preaching, the Holy Ghost fell on them and they began to speak in other tongues and they began to glorify God. I want to tell you, it's an amazing thing. And Peter and those that went with Peter, the other, other tra traditional men, they were amazed. They said, man, this is exactly the same thing that happened to us. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof is death. But there's also opening up your heart and allowing the King of glory to come in. I am so, so glad. I am so, so glad that I had a woman that was standing with us, that we went together. We had nothing. We had no money left. We were broke, stony broke. We headed off with an old bomb car down, drove from Townsville to Brisbane. We drove down there. I think we had 145 pound uh, dollars, or it might have been pound in those days, that we got this check just before we left. And we thought, you beauty. But also before we left, we got a bill for 100. And, we got 145. We got a bill for 140. So we had five quid. We thought we were rich for a minute. But we were rich in the mercy and grace of our God. Amen. And we went down there and, and I didn't know that what God was going to do. But I want to tell you, friends, can I, I cannot. And I'm only saying this. I'm only saying this for one reason. That if you don't take that first step, he won't take the second step. If you don't take that first step, but I want to tell you, if you're prepared to take that first step, there's many, many steps. Hallelujah. And our obedience going that time when it was impossible sent Nancy and I around the world. We've traveled the world. We've seen thousands upon thousands of people touched by the power of God. We've seen the anointing. We've seen, oh my God, I, I wouldn't have time to explain a, a smidgen of what God has done. But I want to tell you, there's no more if you don't take that first step. It's like that step you take when you receive Jesus. That really is the first step. Then if you're willing to say, yes, Lord, whatever it is, Lord. And we said, yes, Lord, in the midst of our, our own dreams and our own whatever it might have been. I'm not trying to highlight anything about us. What I'm trying to highlight is that if God before you, who can be again you? And God, he is an exceedingly abundantly, wants to bless you more than you could ever imagine or think. We thought we were just going down there to look after 12 neglected kids. But I want to tell you, it's been bigger than Ben-Hur. What God has done in our lives and through our lives as a result of that. Why didn't Jesus just say, uh, be healed, receive your sight, spat on the ground? The young man had to be obedient. Obedience is better than sacrifice, amen? Obedience, obedience. I wouldn't get baptized in the River Jordan. Fancy going all the way over to Israel. But my tradition and my thinking stopped me, bound me. Nance did and had an amazing experience with God. I just had the mully grubs. I could have been blessed, but I went home miserable. Today we get caught up with things. Amazing. I can remember at Wombai, we had the pineapple shed. People coming all over the place, getting saved, filled with the Spirit, touched by God. 
surf is coming out of the surf. Different ones just coming to church, clean skins. <laughs> People that really hadn't heard anything about God. They would come out the front there. Most of the boys would be in board shorts. And, and those, what do you call it? The girls would be dressed, yeah. <laughs> Weedy hair, green, you know, all the matted hair and everything like that. But they were getting saved, tears rolling down their cheeks. And you'd pray for them as they, re, as they wept their way to Jesus. And many, many times, most of them, as you prayed for them, the power of God hit them and they'd hit the deck. And as they hit the deck, they'd begin to speak in other tongues. Others there, as you just laid hands on them to pray for them, they'd immediately start speaking in other tongues. But you see, I'd read the scripture that says, repent, be baptized, and you shall receive the Holy Ghost. I said, God, you're doing it wrong. I would even tell them, no, you don't do that yet. You've got to get water baptized. Then you get that. We don't realize how screwed up we are when something happens or, or things and with money or whatever else. Or immediately we remember all the stuff we've heard about, oh, the church wants is your money. And I tell you what, all God wants is you. Walls have got to come down. Things have got to be broken. I believe those walls are coming down. Tradition separates Catholics, Methodists, Baptists, Pentecostals. All have been affected one way or the other. And I would imagine some of us have too. I've got an antidote. It's a pill. You take it. It's called the gospel. <laughs> oh, I remember. I remember when I first got saved, I said, people would come to me and I'd say, who's the man child? I want to know all about Revelation. I wouldn't. I, I still don't know anything about Revelation. And I've only been saved nearly 50 years. I still don't know about Revelation. <laughs> And if you say you do, I've got news for you. <laughs> There's more in Revelation than you and I will ever understand. Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Who sinned this man or his parents? I often wondered, how did that poor kid sin in the mother's womb? Did he kick her or something? <laughs> We're all guilty then. Father, that's for me. I'm out. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Come on, stand your feet. Lift up your hand. Come on, musicians. Come on up here. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. hear these people playing but I want to let you know you are an instrument you are an instrument and God wants you to play your own tune some people here today and I know that you're going through a hard thing so you can't see perhaps through the forest you can't see what's happening around about you 
But I believe that God wants to be able to help you today. Set you free. You might even be feeling like you're in a dry place. You need that touch. You need that touch. You want to come into that place. It's while they have musicians play. I want you to feel like you're, I'm an instrument today and I'm just going to come. Just come into it. I don't understand even what I'm saying here today. I just know that there's something about coming under that, that umbrella or whatever it might be, but just coming in under it. Just cut the play. Alan, keep it going, mate. You're doing good there. Just keep that going. Just keep it going. Come on. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise. Let it rise this morning. Just come if that's you today. God's speaking to your life. Come. Just come and stand out here in His presence. The first step, make that step. Take that step today. Take that step. Take that step to your victory. Take that step to your freedom. Take that step this morning. Take that step. Take that step. Take that step. Father, we just come here today and help us, Father, walk through this minefield. Help us walk out of stuff that we need to walk out and walk into you. Father, let us just not be clouded by our wrong thinking, wrong thoughts, my God, that get into our mind, my God. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you'd help us. In Jesus' name, amen.